From the Wellington Phoenix into the All Whites to Germany and back to New Zealand again, it's my pleasure to welcome in Logan Rogerson, Auckland City player. Mate, you have fit in so much in a short space of time. You're only 22 years of age. Does it feel like the last five years or so has been a bit of a whirlwind? Yeah, it's been like a roller coaster. Um, I guess, like, yeah, it only seems like yesterday when I was kind of signing for the Phoenix type thing, and then I look back and it's been, yeah, it's been five years, you know, it's been pretty, pretty crazy. But I think, you know, when all these things are happening, time just flies, you know, because you're having fun at the same time. And yeah, it's been, it's been a roller coaster five years, but like, I mean, I wouldn't change it for anything. Take us back to that day where you put your, your name on the dotted line for the Wellington Phoenix. Was that something that was in the forefront of your mind that you wanted to do, join the Black and Yellow down in Wellington? No, it never really was. Um, yeah, it just kind of happened real quick. I remember we were qualifying for a World Cup in Chile for the under-17s and I did pretty well. Um, it was kind of the first time playing for New Zealand and everything. Um, and yeah, the Phoenix kind of got in contact and said that they were keen to to have me along. And yeah, I think I spent a couple of months down there, and I was, you know, as a full professional um, at 17, which was, which crazy, you know, all my mates are all at school and stuff, and I get to be a, a footballer. It was, it was a dream come true. And I used to go and watch the Phoenix play when I was younger, and I used to stand in the stand after the game and ask the players for their socks and everything. And so, yeah, it was it was, it was pretty special, yeah. Were, were some of those players, uh, I don't know, Ben Sigmund and Andrew Durante, who then all of a sudden you are playing alongside? Yeah. Must have been awkward. Yeah, it was a bit awkward. I kind of yeah, didn't say anything, but I remember just the first couple of trainings, I was kind of, you know, starstruck, really, um, training with these guys. and. Just actually, just they're quite normal blokes and normal guys. Kind of took me by surprise, you know. I think, oh, you know, 17 coming in to train with the Phoenix, but you know, they're all real nice Kiwi blokes. Guys like Siggy and Mossy and Jura, you know, they're they're real, just real good guys. And you know, I'm glad to that I trained with them for the years that I did. Did they treat you nicely? Because I, I hear a few stories about how they might prank the the younger players coming through. Yeah, so um, we used to have team dinners or at the start of the season, um, just kind of like a team bonding, get the lads together, have have something to eat. And I remember it was my first one. They kind of said, "All right, lads, we're all turning up in our club suits. We got a club suit for the season." So. I got the message right, club suit and everything, and we walked into the restaurant, and I'm the only guy with the club suit on. Everyone's in, You've you know, their you casual gear. They've stitched me. And, <laughs> yeah, it, it was pretty funny. Now I look back at it because I got to do it when I was a um, a couple of years later to the young boys. But yeah, it was definitely. Well, so you did it to the younger guys. Yeah, coming through. yeah. So it was kind of the thing. Like you, you're the joke for a year, and then you can do it to someone else. So. Yeah, it was, it was funny, it was good. Talk about workplace bullying. I mean, you could have <laughs> chosen to broke, break the cycle, you know? Like, OK, I don't want that to happen to anybody else, but you've gone, you know what, it happened to me, I'm going to do it to someone. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> what was it like making that step up into the, the professional realm? Yeah. Like, was there a significant difference from what you were experiencing to all of a sudden going into the Phoenix? Yeah, it was it was tough. Um, in my first six months, I'd train and go home and sleep for a couple of hours, and then go back for my second session in the day. It was it was tiring. It was you know you were always tired and your body was always sore. But you kind of that initial six month period of when you first transition to being a pro, and afterwards your body gets used to it. You're a bit stronger. You're used to the kind of the training loads and yeah. But it, it was tough going from school to you know, throwing in the deep end of training every day with, and, you know, very good players. Um, it was a it was a big step up. Yeah, and what about your, your first opportunity for the first team? Yeah, so I remember, I think I come on against Melbourne City um, as an 18-year-old um, at Westpac Stadium, which was, that was my debut, my A-League debut, and then I made my starting debut against Brisbane, where I managed to score. Um, so yeah, the the A League is it's interesting because I try and compare them to when I was in Germany or even the National League, and it's quite hard. In Germany, it was very physical. The league, um, the A League, it's a bit more. You have a bit more time. Even compared to the National League, I feel that you'd have less time in the National League because the players are kind of flying in, and whereas the A League, everyone's good players, and it's more tactical and mm. try and break each other down type thing. Right, almost kind of like, I mean, I. I didn't play to any great level, but 
you know, when I used to play uh, for Papa Toy, uh, their first team, it's a lot different to now playing or trying to play, trying to run around in like over 30s or over 35s because everybody remembers how good they were yeah. and comes to the realisation that they're actually quite shit <laughs> and can't move the way that you used to. And they just go straight through players. Yeah. You know, it's almost violent in a way. Yeah, exactly. I, was, I did a l play a little bit in the Winter League as well, which is another step down from the... Not step down, but the, it's a, not as... Um, it's not professional like the National League. Um, and I think my first game that I played, someone uh, fractured, my, fractured my leg in my first game uh, in the Winter League. So, yeah, I understand, you know, if players... It must, they must get so angry working their normal job. They just, in the weekend, <laughs> come just, you know, kick people. So, yeah... <laughs> so you, you make your, your first team debut for the Phoenix around a similar sort of time. You, you get selected into the All Whites proper. Mm. You play three matches. What was that experience like? And, and do you think in your heart of hearts, were you ready for it? No, I probably, I probably wasn't ready. And there's probably a lot of people um, probably think that I shouldn't have been in the first place. But... Um, yeah, when it was a, there was quite a few games happening and uh, we were qualifying for the Confederations Cup and the All Whites kind of put out all these kind of standards that the players had to meet, fitness, body fat, percentage and yeah, they kind of handed out to every player and it was kind of like you, you have to meet these kind of kind of standards or guidelines to even be in contention for the All Whites. So I just kind of went, all right, I'll... You know, I would try and meet these guidelines and then Why not? turn up to camp and see what happens, you know. And, um, yeah, I trained. It was pretty hard, I think. I dieted for about three or four months and trained pretty hard. Still been at the Phoenix and everything as well. And then we got to the camp and I don't think many of the players had met their guidelines and I was kind of one of the the handful that had. So they kind of went, oh, well, we can't not take you. You've turned to the camp and met all our you know, criteria that we've given to you. And then he was kind of, all right, I'll, I'll take you. Um, and wow. yeah. How, how did that feel? Like, I'm assuming that more senior, more experienced players than yourself were being turned away, yet here you are. Yeah, ex exactly. There were, I remember there were some, you know, players playing regularly at the Knicks and, um, you know, getting told that, no, you have to leave, you haven't met the criteria. And I was a 17-year-old, never played for, played one or two games for the Phoenix off the bench and, you know, I'm getting um, selected to play for the All Whites. So um, I like to say it was down to hard work that I got, you know, picked for the All Whites, but um, I think it was a bit of luck and I just think the coach at the time, Anthony Hudson, was real... Um, he was a strong believer of, you know, coming in fit and being almost like an athlete, and that's what I did, so I guess he had to take me, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. What was Anthony Hudson like? Yeah, he was He was interesting. Um, I liked him. <laughs> he picked me. He so. picked you in the squad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> he made um, you an all-white. <laughs> exactly, so um, I don't really have too many bad things to say about him, but no, he was He was, a, he was good. I liked him. Um, he was good to young players. He gave a lot of young players chances, like Clayton Lewis and Moses Dyer, and also myself. So he was, and these players were playing in the National League as well. So he was never too scared to give a young player, um, you know, if they come in fit and fit and healthy, um, over players that were playing overseas that you know would come back and they were not in shape. So that's why I liked about them. Mm. So you get into the All Whites through your work at the Phoenix. Mm. But then what happened at the Phoenix which led to your departure and off to Germany? Yeah, so I think um, so. my three-year contract had kind of come to an end and there was kind of a period where the club hadn't signed a coach and I guess players weren't really the first thing on their on their minds really and um, I, was, I was kind of, oh, I'm not going to sit and wait around for a phone call type of thing, I'm going to... I'm going to kind of, you know, try and do things myself here. And if opportunity, you know, haven't uh, come up in Germany, and yeah, I was like, why not? I'm 20. It's probably a good time to, to go over there. And it was, yeah, it was kind of off my own back, and no one helping me. And I just thought, why not get on a plane and go play football in Europe? Crazy. Yeah. And I was, I was told that the the coach that basically not recruited you, or that he was a fan of yours, mm. did he depart the scene? pretty early on in, in your stint there. Yeah, he did. So um, he kind of got, we were, 
we had a rough start, a rough start to the season, um, and yeah, by Christmas, I think three or four months, he he was gone, and then a new coach come in that could speak no English, and and yeah. how's your German? Yeah, it was not so great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so and then yeah, the coach he I had a bad injury there as well, um, and we were in a relegation battle, and he was kind of picking players that who he trusted, which is fair enough, and he hadn't seen much of me, so he kind of said, yeah, you're not really going to play. Um, which is it's just what they like over there. So cutthroat and honest. Um, but if anything, it was it was good for me. Um, you know, having someone that's honest rather than someone that's going, oh yeah, you keep training hard. You you might play. He kind of said you can you'll train you can train as hard as you want. And you'll never play in my team. Mm. So that's the harsh reality, I guess, of European football. And so with that, I suppose you decide that your next move has to be back home for a bit of a reset. Mm, exactly, we were qualifying for the Olympics as well during the same time. So me and my club come to like a mutual um, decision to terminate my contract, um, which ultimately, yeah, I could come back. And they weren't going to let me come back and qualify for the Olympics because I still had one year left on my deal. And they said, the games that you want to go back for don't fall into an international window. So we don't have to release you. So. Yeah, if you decide to stay out your contract, which I had every right to, um, they said that you we wouldn't let you go back to to play for your country. And you know, I never, I always want to play for my country. So you know, to qualify for the Olympics, why not? Um, a one year contract. Um, it's I thought it meant more to try and qualify for the Olympics for my country than to stay in Germany for another year where I probably wasn't going to play. Mm. Mm. I suppose we we are still on the road to the Olympics, the road to Tokyo. Mm. You must get the sense that you're just never ever going to go to an Olympics because 2016 the the disqualification of those ineligible players and obviously with with COVID-19 it, it's pushed it out another year do you get the sense that you'll get a, a shot at these Olympic Games? Yeah I was speaking to <laughs> my parents and I said maybe it's just not meant to be um, but yeah it was it has been disappointing um, but yeah hopefully you know this year and with um, new coach and everything. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to um, hope if things go ahead, it should be should be a pretty crazy experience. Take us back to 2016. Uh, that that whole episode with the ineligible players and it, how did you find out about it a and when? Yeah, so we we were in Papua New Guinea qualifying and we we won most of our games comfortably. We we're heading into the final and. All the players are kind of in their warm-up kits, ready to ready to go. And we sit down in the meeting, and all before a game, you sit down with the coach, and they say, "Oh, this is the team. This is how we're going to play. This is how, at the time, Fiji we're going to play." And we're kind of sitting in a room, and um, yeah, someone walks in with a little envelope, hands it to us, and we, uh, the coach opens it up, or the manager, and it says, "Yeah, that you've been disqualified from." From this qualifying tournament, and that was that was pretty crazy. Um, what was said? Yeah, <laughs> I think yeah, everyone kind of just. Do you swear it. words? Yeah, <laughs> due to a few tears. To be fair, um, yeah, I was yeah, I was I was quite young at the time, so I didn't really understand kind of the magnitude of what was happening. Um, and always in the back of mind, I was like, oh, I've got another cycle. It doesn't really matter, type of thing. And then, um, yeah, it was it was hectic. Not me, no, no one really knew what was going on. We weren't allowed to say much. Um, and yeah, and I don't think anyone kind of knew. It was you know there were lawyers involved and everything. It was, yeah, it was a shambles. Man, and the the worst thing about it is that you guys are out there doing your thing. You just expect that the people in higher places have have gone through the right procedures and and met those requirements. Like it wasn't your fault. Yeah, you'd you'd think so, but um, no, football's football's crazy. Um, so many. You've, I I wasn't even surprised. I think. Um, I think yeah. I think I think Ricky Herbert was in charge of one of the other island teams at the time, and yeah, I think I don't know. Maybe he knew something about players when he was the All Whites coach. Maybe. Oh I'm, really? I'm not sure. It's the Herbinator's fault. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm not pointing fingers. <laughs> well, no, 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 he's not. He's not pointing fingers. Trust us, Ricky. You, you're safe. <laughs> Hey, um, it's interesting how you became to be a footballer because for all intents and purposes, you're from a rugby league family, aren't you? Mm. So how, how did that occur? 
And, yeah. and do your parents, are they still proud of you or have they disowned you <laughs> for kicking yeah. around a, a round ball? Yeah, it's funny. My mum doesn't even come to my football games. You're now. joking. Yeah, she doesn't, she doesn't come. What? I think yeah, I think I have to force her to come now. <laughs> but um, no, nah, my father used to play rugby league and he, he was good. He played club level and a little bit of um, regional stuff as well. Um, but yeah, no, I think he, I think he really enjoys football now. He gets on the Twitter and is always looking at, um, you know, what's happening around around the world with other players. And he, yeah, he, he gets real into it, and it's kind of good having a a father who's not really involved in football too much. He kind of let me do my own thing, and I think that's probably a big part of why, you know, I've achieved so much. Is my dad kind of. You know, was never hounding me in the car driving home or take that hands off approach. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just just let me be, and I think I could play a bit more freer. And there was no kind of expectation for me to for me to yeah, be a footballer. My dad wasn't an all white, or you see, you know, a few few players that I've played with, their fathers are all whites or type thing. So no, it was definitely it was definitely good to kind of take my own kind of pathway, I guess. Mm. And you see it so often where like parents can, can almost meddle mm. in their child's chosen sport. And football is rife with it, right? Yeah, exactly. I think there's a lot of uh, politics involved, especially in school school football. It's, and to be fair, you could say it's not what you know, it's who you know type thing. You know, yeah. I think that's a... And even in football now, agents and everything, um, yeah, it kind of does depend on how good your agent is, really. Not so much about... You have to be a good footballer, but I guess it's your agent as well for when you're playing overseas and everything. Mm. Logan, you've done quite a lot in a short space of time. You're back here in New Zealand playing a trade for Auckland City. What, what does the next sort of four or five years look like for you? What, what do you want to achieve in that time? Hopefully I'm still playing football. Um, if the body if the body holds up, I've been suffering a few injuries lately. But um, you're think, young, you'll bounce back. <laughs> yeah, touch wood. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. If next four or five years are you know Olympics, World Cups coming up. Um, hopefully I can you know tick those off the list. And yeah, hopefully I'm still playing football by then. Hopefully I sign a pro contract very soon. Um, and yeah, just kind of football is what I love doing. So if I can carry on doing doing that for as long as I can, um, I'll be happy. Oh, I wish you all the best. And we thank you so much for joining us on the Kiwi Football Fix. Logan Rogerson, thanks so much for your time. <laughs> thanks for having me.